the iMac is repaired now. I did replace it with the, the saw, uh, a new graphic chip. Um, I've not gone through the full step and, and, and the full length of, of recording the whole process because it's, it's just, just too much of a time consuming for me. So I've taken a bit by bit um, and, and, and uh, we just, just, just dealt with it that way basically. Um, so um, hopefully you enjoy the video. Um, I am sorry that it's not full length um, but it's just the way things are now. I have done many videos in the past. If you look at the history of my um, uh, YouTube videos, you'll find that many videos has been done. Uh, the thing to watch out for when you're doing a graphic chip replacement is that, uh, first of all, that do bake the board so that when you when you sort of uh, putting the board onto a Jovi um, with a heat in excess of 230 degrees Celsius, you're not warping the board or the board's not expanding basically. So, and 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 the, the trade or the trick is to sort of bake the board before the board gets cold. You want to sort of jump it back onto the Jovi and run the profile, get rid of the chip, clean the pads, and then 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 apply the new chip. But I've done some of a, a lot of videos that you can refer on to. But this is just a short one. I hope you like it. Um, here I have the uh, iMac Logic Pod um, with a perfect temperature control. Uh, it's roughly about 80 degree now because I've switched off the machine. Um, so I'll be taking it out quickly before the board goes cold and uh, put it onto the uh, uh, Jovi to replace the GPU here. Okay. Right, just prepping the Jovi uh, 8500 for a rework attempt. So the idea of all this uh, warming up uh, the uh, upper heaters and the lower heaters is just to prep in, uh, prepping the system basically. So I'd, I'd usually run that around about 60% on the utility as you can see it here um, and just leave it running running for about five minutes basically um, with the iMac or Apple board there's no uh, dot at the end of here for the orientation of the chip so you will see a marker on the chip but there's no dot on the PCB just do make a note of the orientation of the board itself basically well the chip itself on, on the board um, and I'm going to apply a bit of flux now and then it goes onto the uh, machine over there. Here we are with the iMac board. I'm just about to start the rework attempt. Um, profiles, it's been loaded but I'm going to start the process. Um, so uh, I'll, uh, the old chip's got to come off and the new chip's got to go on. Okay. Still measuring after replacing the uh, removing the chip, which is here, just about to see there. Um, I'm just measuring the temperature of the board. Right, the profile has now been stopped and I've lifted the chip. That's the old chip. As you can see, that uh, the smoke is still coming out the PCB. Here is the PCB. I'll be cleaning. I'll be cleaning the uh, solder bolts now. Uh, with the use of the uh, Metcal MX5000 series and a very nice tip here. Okay, as you can see that uh, the uh, I've cleaned the solders from the PCB. Uh, there are some little uh, damages uh, due to somebody actually re the chip. Um, let me get a better magnification. Let's get 50, 10 times on and I'll show you. See where the silver... Am I getting a clear? I wish I can get over what's going on here. Right, let's, let's see if I can get a clear view. Um, hopefully not. So as you can see here, it's all the masks have disappeared. There's a few other... areas where solder masks have disappeared also so what I will be doing is I will be like here now remember the solder balls are tiny and they have to make a good contact between the chip and the pads here if the solder ball starts disappearing the sole through these tracks it'll it'll downsize the contact downsize the this the, the solder ball itself which means that good connection won't make, so I'll have to make of the, I'll have to put PCB masking on 
uh, use the ultraviolet and then attempt to put the re replacement chip back on. So I will do that. Maybe to others it won't matter, but to me it certainly does matter. Yes, I'm using mildly um, an ultraviolet light, which is used for nail polish and whatever it is, you know, um, beauty and therapy centres. But I bought it, bought one for my uh, PCB uh, masking. Um, now I've just repaired those areas, and I'm just using this to cure that. Uh, leave it on for about uh, five, five, five minutes, ten minutes, whatever it is. Maybe it's completely unnecessary, but I've just applied a nice layer of flux under the chip. Um, Sometimes not enough flux can actually give you a poor connection, so you've got to rerun a new reflow process, even with a new chip being fitted, to try and get this uh, power on no display issue resolved. And I have come across with it practically, so for that reason I would apply a nice thin layer of flux covering all the solder balls basically and how I did that is with a hot air station set at 100, in, 100, in, 100 degrees celsius and use the uh, flux Amtec flux here and use a nice little brush like this just to spread it all out here we are under the microscope uh, the solder masks have dried there we go little patches where you can see uh, there there a few there you know um, so those have been done now I'm gonna apply a bit of flux and uh, put the chip on in the correct orientation and then it goes in for a reflow process tiny amount of uh, flux and just use your finger with a glove fitted to it you don't want to be touching flux with your bare hand which is cause of cancer so be careful and just massage it in too much flux can actually lift the surface tension will lift the chip and put it out of its correct orientation which effectively means you've got to reball the chip again before you can put it back on so do take care on that basically uh, particularly when you're working with small IC so that's the new one that's the board that's prepared now and I'm quite happy that the flux is it's got a very thin layer of flux Right, the new chip has been put back on and I'm just going through the rework process so I'll be running a reflow. Current temperature is around about uh, 8395 so there is a bit of a temperature difference between the two thermal couple. That's because of way, the way it's been positioned. The old chip is still here. It's the old one. Okay, so... Uh, We'll just wait for it to reach about 220, 225, maximum 230. And I'll hold it there for about 10 seconds maximum and just uh, stop the profile. Completed the rework attempt. Fans on to cool the PCB down, so I'll leave that on for about a couple of minutes. And uh, I'll be cleaning it and then giving an inspection of the solder bolt with the uh, MS1000... Uh, microscope here I am I'm checking the uh, solder ball under underneath with this inspection tool you can get a clear there you go all right here we are just putting the board back in its place so I'll be firing it up very shortly and let you know what's happened uh, in terms of the new uh, graphic chip replacement. But it's a bit of a cock and balls when it comes around putting these units back. Because you've got to, especially on these corners and things like that, it's just a bit of a pain on the ass basically. But I'm getting there. Bravo. IMAX working after replacing a graphic chip. Uh, the symptom of the unit was that uh, basically the Apple logo will appear for a blink of a second and it will disappear, normal display. Um, when I've inspected the board, it was quite evident that somebody has actually either reballed the chip or reflowed, um, basically. And uh, now um, I've replaced it, I've replaced it with a new video chip and uh, everything's good, everything's working. Fantastic.
All the best.